Hey, good morning guys. Saturday, Saturday, March the 21st, March 21st, first, sorry. And uh, so today what I wanted to do is something a little different. Um, as you know, if you've been following me online uh, on the on Facebook, that uh, I, I posted I was gonna be doing a foam roll session today, foam rolling session, and so with the foam rolling session, hopefully you have, I don't know if you guys have these things, but I've got a, I've got a three foot uh, foam roller here. This is actually a high density foam roller, which means it's, it's kind of firm. Um, for some people, this may be too f firm. And at the Memorial Athletic Club, we have a white colored one and a blue colored one where those things are not uh, quite as, as compact and hard as this one is. And, uh, I like this one, it seems to work for me. I also have with me a, a half foam roller, like a traveling foam, foam roller. Um, so I can take with me on my trips and things like that. Um, and then also I have what I, I call a, a massage ball. There's different massage balls out there. This one is called a trigger point um, ball. I really like it because it's got a certain texture to it that it doesn't slip when you're using it. And uh, it doesn't split in half like the ones that we have at the gym, the Go Fit Ball. So we might be updating those. And also I have a, a lacrosse ball, which is kind of hard. And some people may not want to be using the lacrosse ball because it is so hard. I'm going to be talking about some contraindications of those things as well. And also make sure you write your name on it because those things tend to walk away if they don't have your name on them. Um, real quick, this is the shirt I normally would wear. Uh, when I go to work, and I feel like I'm at work today, so I've got my pre CTFW shirt on, Mac shirt. Underneath, underneath, I've got my uh, my Saturday shirt. You guys know me; I have my certain shirts I wear each day. But this is the Ride the Joy. I think it was uh, 2008 that we did that. And a uh, little shout out: Ride the Joy is a is a spinning event that we have. And it, what we do, we do it during the months of November to December. And uh, I always like to talk about my shirts because I take a lot of pride in the shirts and you have to earn these shirts. Um, so Ride to Joy, 16 dots get you the shirt. And uh, we've actually, I wrote this down this morning, forgot my notes already. So since 2007, we've donated almost 4,000 toys to Toys for Tots. And we take great pride in that. We've been doing that since 2007. And then the other shirt I was wearing, um, I haven't worn yet, but our Live Strong uh, Ride to Joy, we've actually raised $10,000, almost $10,000 for the uh, Live Strong Foundation. But uh, I'll be wearing that shirt on another day since we got a couple more weeks involved in this. But uh, contraindication, guys, let me go. Contraindications for the foam roll. If, you're, uh, if you have high blood pressure and it's out of control, you don't want to be doing foam rolling. If you have a, a deep bruise or a cut um, or you know you get stitches, those are reasons why you also wouldn't want to be doing foam rolling. And you don't want to go over the lower back. You don't want to be going over the bone. Um, and you'll know those things when it doesn't, when it feels like it really hurts, um, then you don't want to be doing foam rolling. So why foam rolling? Why foam rolling? So foam rolling is, the, the real name is called myofascial release. And myofascia, myofascia makes up pretty much the entire body. Your whole body kind of is put, is held together by this gluey substance and this, this fascia. And uh, within a muscle, a big muscle, like say the bicep, that bicep is made up of a bunch of muscle fibers. And each muscle fiber is wrapped by this fascia. And sometimes this fascia becomes really sticky and it gets some adhesions and trigger points. And, the, and for the muscle to work, it's got a... Uh, contract and release, contract and release, just like that. It's called the sliding filament theory. And uh, if your muscle doesn't relax and contract like it should, it's not gonna work and does like it should. And so what the foam roll does, it helps smooth out that area that you're foam rolling and helps get nutrients and uh, hydrate the muscle so it can't slide like it's supposed to. So that's the theory. It's not really uh, totally scientifically proven yet, but that's what we know about foam rolling and uh, I like it. it really actually help, makes me feel better and I move better from that um, when you do when should you do foam rolling well you could do it um, 
before an exercise routine, after an exercise routine. So those are the two areas when you want to do it. I will tell you this, if something's really, really hurting you on the morning you're going to go work out, you're like, God, it's not work, walking around too well. Foam rolling may be a good idea to do that on that day to help loosen up the area so it is moving correctly because if you go out and do some sprints or lifting or something like that and then you're going to compensate into a different part of your body weight uh, using different muscles the wrong way and so that would not be a good thing. So foam rolling would really help a person that's got those type of issues. So anyway, I have this, uh, I've got this whole workshop that uh, Chris Daughtry and I, a little shout out to Chris Daughtry, and um, we did this whole workshop. I'm gonna go through this, and uh, we actually did this at the Mac, and I'm just using this format that we did. Um, we're gonna start with the lower leg, and then work up into the, um, the hips, into the upper body. I'm gonna show you some cool things for posture as well at the end. So, here we go. Everybody got your foam rollers? If you don't have a foam roller, they're easy to order on Amazon. Amazon is still working that you know, that's a good site to go to and get your stuff. So anyway, so I'm gonna grab my foam roller and uh, I'm gonna I'm just gonna use the shorter one just because that longer one gets in the way sometimes but, So I'm gonna lay I'm gonna sit on my bottom and hopefully you guys can see this So I'm gonna start with the lower leg which is the Achilles and the calves and uh, responsible for flexion extending at the ankle and the lower leg so I have to actually prop myself up. So some of you may not be strong enough to do that. And if that bothers you, you may not be able to do that. But, and then just putting that on the back of my leg, I feel a little bit of tenderness because that's all the stuff that we've been doing out in my driveway, uh, all the skipping, the running and all that kind of stuff. Now these muscles are tight and tender and they need to be loosened up and getting rehydrated and kind of ironed out. So you can start with the double leg version here where I'm gonna roll back and forth if it doesn't feel too much, then I can go into a double stack leg. So I stack one leg over the other and then come up. Yep, now I feel it a little bit more. And actually, I can roll a little bit more outside. I can roll a little bit more inside. And so here's the thing. I don't want to be on here for three minutes, but I don't want to be on here just for three seconds either. So I say right around 30 seconds to a minute is what you need. Uh, and actually, 75% of that tenderness should dissipate, should go away. So it's not gonna to be totally going away, but you should feel that dissipate a little bit. So I'm, mine's a little bit more to the inside, so I've actually rotated my foot to the inside. I'm gonna roll back and forth, and I like to say about, for me, I'll go like 20 to 30 times back and forth, and that usually does the trick. That usually does the trick for me. So I'm going back and forth 20 to 30 times. I'm probably not gonna do the whole thing today, all 20 30 reps but um, just so for time purposes I'm gonna switch legs and I'm gonna do the same thing the other side so you know I actually had um, brought out the ball and the massage ball and the lacrosse ball and those things can be used for different areas of the body so that's why I have so many different rollers um, there's even the Theragun now and I think uh, Max the Memorial Athletic Club is gonna start selling those soon so those are actually pretty good where you can charge them up looks like a drill and you can actually, uh, it's like a trigger point release um, massage gun. Those are really popular. Another way you could help uh, iron out some of these trigger points in the muscle fiber and the, and the fascia. So after you've done this about 20 to 30 times in that area, then you can move up to the more of the belly of the calf. So I was more down on the back of the ankle here, more of that Achilles. And then I'm gonna move up to my calves. Traditionally, I'm not real sore in the back of my legs. And one reason is because I can't put as much pressure down in this position. I can get a lot more pressure here than I can right here. Just that little bit of difference. But I can still you know, go over that just to make sure. I call this kind of like the magic wand. And when you're over a tender muscle, a tight muscle, it's gonna be tender and it's gonna feel like, yeah, that kind of, I can feel that. Now it shouldn't hurt. It shouldn't feel like it's about to rip apart, like it's gonna explode. If it's too much pain, then that's not good. So it should be a comfortable pain, all right? Um, I am feeling a little bit on the outer muscle here, the outer muscle band, which is called the peroneals, which is that 
uh, responsible for your, your foot going inside and outside. And so when you run and you uh, side to side motions and things like that, it's called, it's this, the stabilization, it's, it's made for stabilization of the ankle. So what I'm gonna need to do now is get a little bit more, more on my side and I can roll on the peroneal. And the peroneal muscles attach right here at this bony landmark right here, and they come all the way down to the top of the ankle here. So again, I don't wanna roll over that bone or this bone, I wanna roll somewhere in between. I've got this whole area to find out where I'm the tightest, where I'm the most tender. And so this side, really not, actually right there, yep, I just found it. And so I'm gonna go little movements here yeah, that's a good one right there. So it's not too painful, but I know I need to be on it. And so it took me going a big, broad area of movement, and then I found a little bit of area where it's more concentrated. That's where I need to do that. So I'm going to go 20 to 30 times right here, and it already feels like it's dissipating. So this one wasn't too tight, and it feels like it's already been effective. And there it's almost gone. So I'm going to switch to the other side. And I'll do the same thing on this side. So get on my side, prop myself up. Hey, and by the way, good uh, good posture is really required here. So I'm going to be like in the side plank. I'm going to be plank. I'm actually working my lateral obliques here while I'm doing this. So I'm getting a lot of core work at the same time. And so you want to try to maintain good posture while you're doing this as well. And this leg's about the same tenderness, not too much more, but it's about in the same location for me. Gonna go about 20 to 30 times on this side. That kind of actually radiates down to my top of my foot. Uh, speaking of that, so when we get to another area, so if it radiates down, you might be, you might be over a, a nerve area, and so you wanna be careful not doing that one too much. Uh, you don't want to aggravate a nerve, so if it ever shoots down into your foot or something like that, that may mean that, may mean that you're over a, a nerve area. And so you don't want to do that one too much because obviously you're going to irritate the nerve. Now, moving to the hamstrings. So hamstrings, for me, I cannot, I just can't, this is not much. I don't get, I, I know there's a lot of pressure here on my hamstrings. All my body weight's on there except for my lower leg, but this to me is not real effective with the foam roller. Now, if I move to the ball, the ball is gonna get a little bit more of a pinpoint area in there. And now that's a lot more effective for me. And I even brought the chair over because I like to use the chair for, uh, hamstrings so I can actually place the ball right here and again the hamstring runs from here actually um, here below the knee and all the way up to the glute um, and so it's going to be somewhere in there typically for me it's more at the higher end uh, closer to my glute and then I'm just going to slowly come down and then I can roll back side to side on that and see what maybe forward and back and see where the most tender spot is for me. Uh, and uh, typically it's more tight towards the inside for me. But again, this may be too much for people to do is to be up on a chair, on a ball, on the hamstring, because this is, this is a lot of pressure right now. But it's not so much where I'm like, oh, I can't sit here. So again, it's not too much, but it is enough to where I can feel it's starting to loosen up. Then there are some things in the industry that I've seen that you can actually, when I'm on that tender spot, which is more medial for more inside for me, is I can start to do a little movement where I'm stretching the hamstring and then relaxing, stretching and relaxing. And I'm gonna move through that range of motion while I'm under that pressure with the this, uh, massage ball on my hamstring. And that kind of helps get things loosened up a little bit more effectively and again i'll probably do like uh, 20 to 30 reps here which is like 20 to 30 seconds and i'm just going to check on the outside see it's not much there for me it's more the inside for me probably because of the adductor uh, when we did the running on tuesday there's a lot of adductor muscles that that get used the inner thigh muscles that get used when we do that and uh, that one was pretty tight on me so i'm going to switch the other leg now see if it's the same thing so it's not much out here 
Yep, again, it's kind of the inside right here. And so, um, just gonna roll back and forth a little bit. This one not is not quite as tender. It's just that's because of my right leg seems to be the dominant leg for me when I run and when I squat. And it's been a, like last 15 years I've been kind of dealing with that. But that's why I have so many foam rollers in my house to kind of keep things balanced out in my body. Because if I do not keep things balanced, then that's when things get out of control and I start really, really overcompensating and uh, my back actually gets uh, overworked. So that is the hamstring. Let's go to the, the hips and the glutes, IT band area. So um, like I said before, I mentioned that you can't be like one muscle group uh, or one muscle specifically uh, because there's so many different areas like when I'm gonna sit on the ball right now, and I'm gonna be locating an area on the back pocket here, right about here where I'm gonna place this ball. And again, you can even use the roller. I'm gonna use the roller just to start with to show you because not too many people have a massage ball. So I'm gonna lay, I'm gonna roll to the side, to the side that I, I want to uh, work on the rolling on. So it's my right leg, it's my right side. So I'm rolling to that right side to get pressure. Not much is there for me. So I'm gonna do the next thing is I'm going to cross a leg. And now I'm gonna roll. A little bit more, and again, I've gotta kinda of change the position where I'm at. So I'm a little bit more on the outside. And still, I know, I know that my, the ball is more effective for me, so I'm gonna switch right now. I love the trigger point ball for my hamstrings, my hips. Um, the IT band area. So now, yeah, it's a lot more effective with this guy. So it's not too much pain, it's not too much pain, but it is enough to where it's, it's the difference that I need. So I'm gonna go back and forth a little bit here. And the other thing that I like to do with this too is I like to put the, foot, the leg on the ground and then I'm gonna go through some flossing on this side where I'm gonna engage the, the glute and then relax it, engage and relax. And so that kind of helps that muscle get trigger point release a little bit more effectively, okay? So again, that spot for me is typically right here. It may be a little bit to the side for you, a little bit over here, a little up, a little down. It's not exactly the same for everybody. So you gotta know that and understand that. Now, the next thing I wanted to mention that I see a lot of people, we're gonna do the IT band, but I'm not gonna roll over my IT band because that muscle can take so much pressure and you're not doing any good by rolling over the entire IT band. What you're gonna be more effective at is where the IT band attaches. And that attaches right underneath this bony landmark right here, all this area here. There's actually a lot of muscles that attach right in here some of the hip flexors, the IT band, some of the glutes, so all this stuff right in here, you can actually, you can palpate, which means you're touching yourself right here. Um, so I'm gonna, right around this area where it's kind of a soft tissue area, you don't wanna be on the bone, but that's where I'm gonna put this ball right here, I'm gonna lay on my side. I'm gonna lay on my side. So, just gonna move this a little closer so you can see it gonna lay on my side right on that spot I was talking about all right lacrosse ball wants to go traveling but we're not gonna let him so right here yeah that's it that's it for me right there so now yeah that's this is a really prominent area on me that gets really really tight okay and then once I find it once I find it the leg is bent on the bottom the top leg is kind of above, out of the way. And then I'm going to bring, okay, can you guys see that? Where I'm bringing my leg up and down. So this leg, this leg is actually rotating like that. So the leg comes up and down, up and down. So I can kind of floss this area right here. So now I'm gonna lay on my side right here. And then I'm going to bring the leg up and down. And so, yeah, that's, that's pretty tender on me. This is always a really tender area. I mean, I will do this about 20 to 30 times real effective. I'm going to show you from this side facing the other way so you can see. I'm going to do my other side now, but that way you can see what this leg is doing if you didn't see it real well. 
So I'm going to be right here. This leg is bent. I'm going to bring the leg up and down that way. You guys can hopefully see that. This side is not near as tight as my tighter side. My right side is my tighter side. But hopefully you guys can see what's going on with me doing this. Okay. And again, I'm going to do this about 20 to 30 times. So 10 seconds is not enough. Way over a minute's too long, okay? So now let's go into the quads. Let's go into the quads. I like to use, uh, and again, if you don't have a massage ball, the, if you don't have a massage ball, the roller will be fine for quads. And so your quads are your thighs, the front of your thighs, by the way, just in case I'm getting a little too advanced on my wording there. And again, I'm gonna be in a position where I'm in a plank so I've got to be sturdy and strong here in my trunk, not let my lower back arch. So keep that lower back in a good position, your pelvis rather. And then I'm going to start, I'm going to start above, below this bony protrusion, not over my groin. So probably like right around here, all the way down to the top of my thighs, uh, the bottom of my thighs actually, where, where my kneecaps are at, and then all the way back up. I'm going to go through a broad range first. I'm going to keep my feet straight in a good plank position, and now I'm going to roll all the way up and back. And so I don't feel much there at all. Some people are like, ah, I mean, they're like dying right now because they're so tender in their thighs. A lot of adhesions there, and the, the sliding of the muscle fibers and the, the fascia just hasn't been ironed out from them that much. They don't do much flexibility in that area. That's why. So. If you notice, I'm going to kind of go this way a little bit so you can see my feet because the position of your feet will make a big difference of where the muscle, what part of your thighs you're going to be getting. So what I'm going to do now is face this way so you can see my feet. All right. Hopefully you guys can see my feet. So see how my feet are straight up? Now, if I turn my feet like this, turn them out, then I do it now. That feels a little more tender on me because now I'm getting more of the inside of my thighs. And that one I can feel. This one I can feel. So I would do this about uh, 20 to 30 times over this part of my uh, upper legs, my thigh area. So that one I did. This one I did it, I didn't feel it. But now that I'm doing this, I can feel it. So just by turning your, if my feet are straight down or turned out, turning them out, I got right here, and that was really effective for me, very effective. So now, let me go through my notes here. We're on page, we've done page one, we've done page two. Um, I think I have this memorized, but I just wanna make sure I cover everything. Yep, got that, got that. So when you do the thigh also, you could do one leg at a time. You could do one leg at a time where I'm going to prop one leg up on top of here and the other leg is going to be off. And so this one is traditionally really effective for me. So I'm going to come here and it's got to be kind of like perpendicular. Can you guys see that? Yep, I think you can. So now that's exactly where, oh man, that's really, see this one's really tender on me. And so I'm going to go, it's a really, really fine area, a real small area. I can come all the way in, all the way out, but still right here where my, the top of my um, quadricep muscle is, the thigh, that is it for me. And I can even go through some range of motion here like that, some flossing on that where I'm going to stretch and release that area. And that one really released quickly. So that was nice. That was like really quick. So now, probably because I already did the other one to begin with, and I'm on my other side now. This is gonna get some adductors in here as well. So I'm gonna to have to roll here a little differently. You can change your position just by rolling the leg like that. And then I can move back and forth just to check it. And then once I find that area, then I'm gonna go through my flossing on that side. So up and back, I'll do that about 20, 30 times. I'm not gonna do the whole thing with you guys just because I don't wanna go, um, too much time, take up too much of your time. So anyway, all right, so that's that. Now for the upper body, we're gonna go more upper body now. And so the upper body can be done 
uh, the lats. So the lat muscle, we're gonna move all the way up to here into the lats. What the lat is gonna be right underneath your armpit, right here. I'm gonna be placing that foam or other right here. And the reason why I wanna go here, because this is where all these muscles attach, but they actually fan back. They wrap around and they come into your lower back. So the lats are really, really important muscle for um, hip stabilization. And if those get really tight, they actually can pull your pelvis in an up position. And uh, so we want to just make sure that those are loose. So let's place this guy here. I'm trying to figure out which way is the best way for you guys to see me. So I'm going to be on my side. I'm going to position that right in that area that I talked about. Yeah, that's pretty tight because I traditionally do a lot of pull-ups and uh, a lot of rows. And so even though that's, that's, that's a good exercise, but you've got to make sure you got to make sure that those are staying nice and loose and, and not too much trigger points. So if you do a lot of something that's called overuse, and that's one reason why um, that they invented foam rolling and stretching and massages for that purpose alone for that overuse. And uh, you can help kind of get those things back to the, the way they should be, the consistency of the muscle fiber and the uh, fascia. So it's, because that fascia gets tightened up when you overuse it over and over and over. And so that one actually released pretty quickly too. So I'm coming forward and coming back. And then let's do the other side real quick. Onto this side. Right here. Yep, so it's me. It's a little bit more. Some of you might have to be back here. I don't feel much here. But as I'm coming forward, I get a little bit. And then right about there. That's where I want to go. And I'm going to kind of go back and forth, just little movements here. Feels pretty good. Hope you guys can, uh, hope you guys have a foam roll and you can work on this stuff today. So the chest, let me go to the chest real quick here. So now I like to use the ball for my chest. And typically where you want to do the foam rolling, where you want to do your foam rolling for the, um, for the chest is if you place if you can touch your, your chest here with the same hand right here, that's where it's going to be. That's where you want to place the ball, right here. It doesn't have to be over the, the middle of the chest, but right up in here. That's where the ball is going to go. And you can actually go against the wall and move your arm up and down, or you can lay down. So I've been laying down, so we're going to stay on your, on your belly. All right, it's going to be like this, right here. And then I'm going to move, start here and then work the arm all the way down and then come all the way back up. And I'm gonna do that like about 10 to 15 times. This is not too tender, but I can still feel it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and do about eight to 10 reps. I'm gonna switch sides and do the same thing. I'm gonna make sure I get it in the right spot, which I know where my spot is, but you have to measure. You may have to palpate yourself and make sure you're in the right spot kind of change it maybe go more outside maybe more inside but again you're just trying to get that muscle area to loosen up okay all right now the one thing i like about the foam roller is something you can work on your posture with something you can work on your posture with so what I, what my physical therapist, Brian Scully showed me is that when you're, if you have a tendency to sit in a chair and work on your computer or drive a lot, um, we have a tendency for the upper back to get rounded, that mid upper back. And so this next thing I'm about to show you is more of an exercise that you can do. A little bit of foam rolling in there, a little bit of trigger point, but more or less what it's going to be doing is helping you get the mid spine mobility back. So it's more of a mobility thing that you're going to be doing here. So I'm going to show you from the side here. Scoot my stuff out of the way. Right about here. And so this is going to, I don't want to ever be on my lower back on the, on the foam roller, by the way. I want to be more on my shoulder blades, kind of where I can still, my feet are on the ground, my legs are bent, my butt is on the ground, and now this is at the base of my shoulder blades. Then I'm going to place my hands on my head like this with the elbows in close. 
And now, keeping my lower, keeping my butt on the ground, I'm gonna see if I can roll back all the way and touch and touch my hands. So I just recently, I just recently started showing my clients this, and some of my clients can't do it. I mean, they're like they're like stuck, and it's the ones that sit in front of the desk all day long. It's one the front, and they sit in front of the desk all day long, and and the computer all day long, and they're just they're not very mobile here, and they're getting this problem in their upper uh, extremity posture problems. So once you get here, you can either hang out, take a couple of deep breaths. So inhale, exhale, then come back up and do it again. So when you're in the down position, when you're in that down position, that lower position, try to take an inhale, exhale, relax, stay there for like three seconds, then come back up. So here it is again. So coming down, once I get to my point, and when you relax, when you exhale, you can actually relax and go into a little deeper movement. So I really like that one. I really like it. Uh, the other one I want to show you that one of my favorite ones to do is I'm going to get uh, lengthwise on my roller. My, this is where my big roller would come into play. And I could use this big roller for any of the things that I've done so far. But I'm going to place this here. I'm going to set my bottom right here. Lay lengthwise on the roller. Some of you guys know this one. I'm going to come back nice and slow. So now that my head's on the foam roller, I can even work it to where the base of my skull is at the very edge here. And then I'm just going to lay, I'm going to either keep my legs bent and my arms out to the side and just let your arms relax and just stay right here. And you can kind of maybe work the shoulder blades a little bit on that side's a little tight for me, a little tender on this side. Yeah. So you can kind of work it back and forth a little bit. Or you can just hang out here, but just hanging out here for some people is like, whoa, I'm really tight in my chest. And you can also work it to where this, the corner of the foam roller gets in the very back of the, of the top of the skull here, the bottom of the skull rather, and I can kind of work that a little bit. Okay, kind of work these areas. And then I'm gonna roll off slowly. And when I lay on my back, it feels so good to do that, but um, that's one of my favorite ones to do. That's the one I, that's the one I usually typically like to end with, with that one. So I went over these things kind of quickly, guys, but do take some time to use the foam roller. I think it would really, really benefit. You'll really benefit from it. And again, you can get these tools on um, Amazon.com or when we open up again at more Athletic Club, we have a lot of these different modalities there and a Theragun, um, which I forget the model that we have. I apologize, Dave Cardone, but we do have those at the Mac. And uh, anyway, guys, I hope you have a great Saturday, and I hope you learned a little bit about massage, uh, uh, foam rolling. And we will see you tomorrow morning at 9.30 for a little, um, little workout. Guys, have a great day. Do something productive. God bless each and every one of you. Love you guys. Take care.